new ideas and lifestyles, how reluctant we are sometimes to accept them. Some examples from history. Henry Ford said, you can have any color car you want as long as it's black. They told Orville and Wilbur, if the Lord had intended man to fly, he'd have given him wings. And remember the handkerchief makers years ago who said, nobody is going to blow his nose on a piece of paper and throw it away. What happened to Kleenex? Anyway, and in 1936 and again in 1946, Birmingham City Fathers told Delta Airlines they couldn't put their headquarters in Birmingham because we didn't need them. We had U.S. Steel. Well, the list goes on and on and on. Now, computers, they are here, a fact of life. But a lot of us are intimidated by all that hype and confusion, so we back away from it. Today, we begin a series of classes with our instructor, Fred Dignazio, to learn about computer terms. We call it Morning Show Computer 101. Fred, welcome back. Now, we're gonna, you're gonna, this thing is going to intimidate me, and it's going to intimidate a lot of folks out there. So it's not all that bad, is it? Not a no, I thought what we'd do, too, is we got a computer here that is the sleekest. It's the latest computer. It's the Amiga computer. And uh, we borrowed it from Command Computer over mm -hmm. in Village East across from Century Plaza. All right. But we're going to move away from the computer just for a second. And we're going to go to something familiar here, a record album uh -huh. and a record. And the key to making any computer work is software. And so this is software. And I think it's something everybody out here isn't the least bit intimidated, intimidated about. I thank you for doing it because my wife said yesterday, what is software? Software I is... I said opposed to hardware. Well, the program you play on your record, <coughs> record player is music. On, right. on your a, record would be software. On a record, then. right. On a tape cassette, your software is the tape, and again, it's music, sounds, voices, or what have you. Now, on a computer, it's just a little bit different. It comes on these little disks. Mm -hmm. You have one here. Yeah. Now, some times they were called floppy disks, but now there's a new little disk, a rigid disk. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the term floppy works anymore. But again, you have stored in here magnetically information, sounds, pictures, what have you. And well, wait so a minute. Let's back up. Who okay. stored it in there? How does, how does it get there? That's right. It had to be stored by a programmer at some time. And the programmer could be either you working on your personal computer, or it could be stored at a factory by the manufacturer and then sold over the counter. Uh, at a local computer store or discount store. So whatever information I wanted to put on the computer to call it up at some future date, I would put on here and I would type it all in there and it would record on there. That's right. And you make a good point because a record, of course, you cannot store anything new on. You have to go with what you've got at the store. A tape cassette, though, I think is more like a computer disk because you can put your own software mm -hmm. on the tape cassette. Now. The next step for us is to actually load the software. And to do that, there's a little hole, just like a player uh, on a tape cassette mm -hmm. player or a record player turntable, where there's a little device called a disk drive in the computer. And you take the software, you can do it here, All right. and push it into that hole there until it clicks. All right. And now you've loaded the software, and the computer records what's going on on its picture screen. So here we have a picture of a disk that is known as the workbench disk to the computer. And you can take this device over here, Tom. This is known, you might want to hold it up. Mm -hmm. This is known as a mouse. And there's a whole new generation of what we call mouseketeers. <laughs> and right. you're going to become a mouseketeer I'm going to be a mouseketeer. Well, where are my ears? <laughs> and, well, here, here are the mouse ears, my, right. and we'll have to do with those. Now, your left mouse ear allows you to select things. And turn the mouse over, and we'll show people what a mouse really is. Underneath it is just this little ball. As that ball rolls around on the table and makes contact with the table, it allows this little arrow up here to move around on the screen. You can do that now. All right, now. let's do that now. All right, here we go. Move that arrow. Be There's a mouseketeer the arrow. and move Anywhere your arrow. I move it. I can move it. In. All right. Okay. And then the left button up there will allow you to select things. So why don't you point at the disc. Point at the disc. And I press two let times Let me do that again. Quickly. Here we go. Get we my go. arrow up there. And I press what? Twice? Two times quickly. There's a little zzz, which means the computer is busy. Uh -huh. And up here, and you have a window. I can hear the computer is a little bit busy. It's the little disk it there. The wheels are clicking. So All right. It's recalling the information from the disk we just loaded on. Mm -hmm. Now we have several drawers. One thing I want to make a point about now is that computers, in an effort to try to be easier or, quote, user-friendly, have tried to make the screen look more like a desktop that we're familiar with. So as you can see here, we have we have lots of drawers, file drawers. So we all have filing cabinets. Mm -hmm. Inside those drawers are programs that you can use. Right. Over here is a trash can where you throw away 
information you don't need. <laughs> okay, the file 13. Okay, and we have a clock that would allow you to keep track of what's going on. Now, why don't we open one of your file drawers, your right, utilities I'll bring my drawer. mouse over here. All right, and point right over at utilities, all the way over I can't here. get my now, mouse. pick up this. A good okay. thing you learn as a mouseketeer is pick up the mouse and move it back over, and then okay. come forward some oh, more. Oh, I got you. Now. And go on down to utilities. Down to utilities. And then you double click. Once you We're point right, there. right and double click. Double click the left one. Uh-huh. And that will open the utilities drawer and it becomes a new window. It's all like right. a new When you say utilities, I could put all my Alabama Power Company bills in there, my gas company bills, and my oh, phone bills, right. and things like that. That's right. That's, that's a, a, the common way we think of utilities. But it also, on a computer, means certain tools that you would use. Mm -hmm. And for example, a notepad and a calculator. Why don't you double click notepad? All right, and now we'll that, open. Now, okay. now, this is your first program. Before we've been opening drawers. Yeah. Now, this now is a, here's a program, a notepad program. All right. The Z's indicate that it is working. That's right. And what you'll have here is an empty notepad, an electronic notepad. Okay. Why don't you type something on the screen, just um, on the typewriter keyboard? Okay. It's Excuse something simple. Me back. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And this would be as if you were making a note to yourself that you wanted to recall something for later. Okay. We'll let folks see this. This is, I want to remember to pay my utility bills. Now, <laughs> <laughs> well, I notice you have a little problem with your spelling here, Tom. Yeah, I, uh, I, did I? So we can demonstrate yeah, I something I'm, I'm left out a little right bit. off the bat here. If you looked at that and said, that's not quite right, why don't you hit this backspace button and watch this little, this is called a cursor here on the computer okay. screen. It indicates I take that U out, right? your, your position, yeah. right? And now what do you want to put in place of a that y. U? A Y, okay, right. and go ahead and type space and, and bills again. And what we're showing here is on the electronic screen. Oops. Well, we, we can make even more mistakes. Yeah. And we there can we also instantly correct what we've typed. And so, see, you fixed what you typed. I left out an E, remember to. Well, we, what Rend we could do. But <laughs> see, you could go all the way back and you could correct that too. Uh -huh. But it's showing on the electronic screen, you can instantly correct things that you've made. Uh -huh. How about one more thing down here, the calculator? Okay, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, while we do okay. this, before I, while I get the mouse down here, uh, we're going to get the mouse on the calculator. We're going to take a break in just a moment and, and come right back. Okay. These are fun to play with, too, <laughs> besides being utilitarian. Okay, Fred Dignazio, our computer connection is here, and we're, we're you are doing Computer 101, something that everybody can understand, even me. Now, I have typed a little something in there, then where are we now? We've, we've put the mouse on the calculator and we've called it up? That's right. First, There's a calculator. That's right, and you, on top of your notepad, you've just put a calculator. What you could liken it to is taking paper on top of your desk, and so having lots of different papers. You have a messy desk now. Yeah, well, you've indeed, got, yes, Tom. I can understand so, that. If you wanted to type more notes on your notepad, you're going to need to move your calculator off the top of your notepad. Right. So you move your little arrow up to the top of that right. box, of the calculator box, and click your button and hold that button down. The left one? Uh-huh. Right. And move your mouse down slowly, and let's see what happens. Yeah, look at that window. That's the window with the calculator. You can move it anywhere you want on the screen and show folks. It's like moving a page or a piece of paper around on your desktop. Okay. Ah, okay. Now I got that and I still got That's this. That's right. So now you could be using, go over, in, well, you could use your, your memo pad now mm -hmm. and type something new or you could go over and do some calculations. Why don't you press a couple number keys and we'll show folks how the display on the top. Right, how about the six? All right. See, so it's just like a little electronic calculator oh, yeah. on your screen. Six. Nine. Okay. And as you press your mouse, it's the same as pressing the calculator keys. So I guess what this... So this makes this a calculator, albeit rather that's slow. Right. But, uh, that's right. You've got the computer's best ability is to become other tools and devices. So mm -hmm. we, this morning, have shown how it can become a memo pad mm -hmm. and a calculator. In future weeks, we can show how it could become an actual electronic typewriter. It could become a spreadsheet program that allows you to add up col long columns of numbers. Mm -hmm. It could become a huge filing cabinet. You can throw all of your information into, sort it, organize it, and get it back at your fingertips. All right, now these are coming. Let's, let's talk practicality okay. of computers now. 
This, you say, is the sort of the state of the art. This is one of the newest ones out. Yes, that's right. And it's right. getting smaller and smaller. That's the right. The screen, of course, has got to be big enough to accommodate it, but the rest of this stuff here yeah. is becoming smaller. I, I think, yes, that's right. The practical thing about this, Tom, is, is that as you have these new computers come out, people think, well, that the computer automatically does everything. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, let's see if I have one with me. One example I like to give is the ballpoint pen example, is that I say that a computer all right, without this software that comes on these diskettes, is like a ballpoint pen without a point. Okay, uh -huh. so the point being that if you get a computer and you don't buy this software, all right, you're Did still, you? n this computer sits there dead in the water. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do anything. So I in terms of expenses, there are hidden costs when you get into buying computers. Your first expense is that in addition to this computer a box right here which contains the memory and the little microchips that make up the computer and the keyboard and the mouse which you get at the base price all right which is around fourteen hundred dollars by the way you also have to go in the market for a high resolution color picture screen mm -hmm. if you're going to have a computer that looks like this once you buy that then you start having to shop for discs your software to turn your computer into a memo pad a calculator, a typewriter, a filing cabinet, to play games, mm -hmm. to, teach your te to teach your kids, you need to buy software. So this is a hidden cost that you may not know about initially, but which may double or even triple the cost okay. of your computer. Is that sort of like the Gillette uh, syndrome? You remember Gillette said, we'll give them the razors, but they've got to buy our blades. That's right. Is, That's this, right. is this what we're doing with these discs? Well, I think it's the same, too, when you buy a uh, stereo, yeah. uh, okay, is that you initially get it, but then you find yourself collecting record <laughs> albums. <laughs> Give them the stereo, but they've got to buy our records. That's right. Mm. So I think that's a good analogy. And so you find, as you get more and more into computers, you want it to do more and more things, more and more powerful tasks, and you're spending more and more money. But so it's good to keep that in mind when you take that first plunge. Okay. You know that we're right on the, the, the edge, the cutting edge of, uh, of this technology. And uh, a lot of the people out there are going, ho, 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 ho. But it's going to be a part of your life. And you can, it's just like automobiles and uh, sewing machines and things like that. We got better and better and better. And I think the exciting thing is that computers were awkward. They were scary when they first came out. Yeah. They were ones and zeros and just for like a priesthood of experts. Yes. But now they're trying to be as user friendly as they can, look like a desktop or a trash can or a filing cabinet. And so you, becoming a mouseketeer, I think, is, <laughs> is easier than it, it, than it is. used to be. Now, Fred uses the term user friendly. That means that you feel comfortable with it, That's and you right. can use it because you consider it a, 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 a tool. I once wrote a book called How to Get Intimate with Your Computer. <laughs> you did? Kind of a, racy title It's a there. cartoon book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, what it does is it tells you that when you get that keyboard uh, and the computer, is that you treat it like a sex object or like your automobile or yeah. anything else. Is touch, feel, gut feelings are just as important in a computer is anything else. So how does that keyboard feel? How does, it, does the picture screen look to you? When you get something like this and you put it up here and it transposes from here fingers and here it up there, it's sort of like putting your foot, the pedal to the metal. That's right, and the you feel pedal it. to the metal. All and right. you get a feeling, and if you have a good feeling, you're gonna wanna use that computer. You're gonna learn more about software. Yeah. But if you have a bad feeling, it's not your fault. It means that the computer wasn't designed properly. All right, we're gonna continue this uh, next week. Fred will be back and we'll uh, have part number two of this becoming friendly and becoming user friendly with your computer. Thank you, Fred. Fred Dignazio. We'll be back following this and talk about uh, cosmetics for black skin.